It's that time of year again. In the spirit of tax season, which is of course everyone's favorite time of year. I'd like to tell you all about a little known tax that snuck into existence last November. It's a perfect demonstration of how far the government will go for a few extra bucks. In an effort to prove that government is capable of taxing literally everything, last fall Chicago residents were hit with a PlayStation tax. When gamers powered up their PlayStations back on November 9th, they were met with this message that informed players that, as of November 14th, users would be charged an additional 9% on PlayStation Plus subscriptions and PlayStation's various streaming services. For all the non-gamers out there, PlayStation Plus is a service that gamers need to buy if they want to play with their friends online. In other words, in today's subscription-heavy world, if you have a PlayStation, you're probably using at least one of the services that Chicago is taxing. It's raining! Money. Hallelujah, it's raining! Money. To be fair, November was not the start of Chicago's amusement tax, only the point at which Sony finally succumbed to the rule. Xbox and Nintendo, meanwhile, have been charging the fees for years. It seems that Sony only caved after the city made some very thinly veiled threats about taking necessary steps to enforce compliance. Sony had previously bent to the tax man's will when it started collecting sales tax on items in the PlayStation Store starting in April of 2016, and it started doing the same in Canada this January. But rentals, aka temporary downloads, are a totally different breed and wouldn't be subject to Chicago's insane 10 and a quarter percent sales tax. What the hell is wrong with you people? Clearly, the politicians in Chicago felt that streaming was a very important untapped revenue source. Once upon a time, the city's amusement tax only really applied to concert tickets and sporting events, but in 2015 was expanded to include any paid television program, whether transmitted by wire, cable, fiber optics, laser, microwave, radio, satellite, or similar means. The city's finance department rationalized this addition by ruling that the amusement tax applies to charges paid for the privilege to witness, view, or participate in amusement, even if that amusement is being delivered electronically. In other words, you're not allowed to have fun without them making money. Come and play with us, Daddy. Forever. And ever. And ever. Note, there was no vote on this. The finance department just sort of did it. Even so, it would sort of make sense, at least, if the taxes were going back into things like libraries or museums or community theaters or even city cultural events, maybe into improving internet services. You know, something that provides amusement? No. The estimated $12 million a year is going straight into the city's gaping budget hole and drowning pension system. Scientists unveiled the first ever photo of a black hole. <laughs> it's also part of the $530 million increase to Chicago's police department, which has yet to manifest in any decrease in crime. Yet again, the people are paying for the government's bad decisions. Seriously, they should like take a class or something. Supporters say the tax is merely a way to level the playing field between online retailers and brick and mortar stores, even though consumers would only be charged the sales tax and not the amusement tax if they opted for the physical version of the game or movie rather than streaming it. That in and of itself violates the 1998 Internet Tax Freedom Act, which prohibits states, counties, and cities from imposing discriminatory taxes on electronic commerce. So in 2015, a group of Hulu, Amazon, Netflix, Xbox, and Spotify users sued Chicago, arguing that the tax violates federal law. Unfortunately, last May, a judge ruled against them, claiming that physical movies and streamed movies are apples and oranges. 
The judge also argued that since the amusement tax precluded the PlayStation tax, or cloud tax as some people are calling it, it wasn't a new tax. It was only a reinterpretation of an old law. Last August, Apple also filed a suit with the Cook County Circuit Court alleging that the tax is discriminatory and illegal. Their argument is, again, the Internet Tax Freedom Act, but that the tax also violates the Illinois Constitution. Illinois state law states that taxes can can be levied on anyone in city limits, but the streaming tax is based off of billing addresses, not necessarily physical location, and therefore there's no guarantee that the service is actually being used within city limits. Their suit also touches on the 14th Amendment and the Federal Commerce Clause. That lawsuit is still floating around the courts and, as far as I can tell, hasn't seen any updates. So for the time being, it just looks like the people of Chicago will have to pay to be amused. That concludes your tax time muse <laughs> for the week. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this PlayStation tax or if you live in the city of Chicago and how terrible it is. <laughs> if you really like my channel and want to help support it in other ways, you can do so over at Patreon or through a one-time donation through PayPal or crypto. Until next time, thanks for watching and helping me to spread the message of liberty. And that taxation is theft.